In this video, I'm going to take you through seven crops you can still plant in August in almost any zone. The last couple of months, these what to plant in this month are getting a little bit shorter, but next month, you start thinking about fall planting. So the list is going to start getting longer again starting next month. It's about right now when I usually start to get a little tired of the summer garden. The heat, the pests, the diseases, all the things we don't have in the fall and winter garden, they're at their peak right now. So let me know in the comments if you guys are there as well, or if you're still, you know, powering through the summer just like you were in March or April. And if you are, or you're just one of those people who is going to just keep going no matter how you feel, then I've got these seven crops that you can plant right now. Now, I'm still talking about mainly summer crops. So you do need 60 to 75 days between today, this is like August 3rd, and your first frost date. So you can Google your zip code, your town, whatever, and first frost date. Just make sure you have at least 60 to 75 days between now and then. And all these are good, uh, except for a couple, which you can plant no matter what. And I'll let you know what those are when we get to them. So all these choices can be planted from seed right now, or if you ha don't have quite 60 to 75 days until your first frost, um, you can get garden center transplants and that'll take a couple weeks off. So my first choice is beans. Beans are great to plant successively throughout the summer because in a lot of places, especially humid places, you know, beans might start getting attacked by all kinds of pests and disease at this time of year. And so to always have some more coming on, it's just a good idea. And we're talking pole beans or bush beans. Bush beans are great because you can tuck them into any small space that's available in your garden. You don't have to worry about a trellis or anything like that. And they're almost as productive, especially in a shorter period of time, than uh, pole beans are. You can set up a teepee like this one here and poke two or three seeds at the bottom of each pole. Keep them well watered and they'll scramble up those poles or fill out in bush form in no time and start giving you some nice fresh green beans. And beans don't do that well from transplants, so it's a good idea to plant them from seed. They don't like their roots disturbed once they're starting to grow. So if you can get seeds in the ground, it's better to do that. My next choice is cucumbers. Now, cucumbers, uh, I do the same as I do with beans, and I keep new plants coming along all throughout the season. I don't know if you live in a place that acts like where I live, but cucumbers are really hard to keep healthy. Um, they just get all kinds of diseases, all kinds of pests, just attacking them all the time. And it's just way easier to just plant new ones than to try to nurse a sickly plant along. You might be able to do it, but it's not going to be as productive and it's going to be a lot more work. So every month throughout the growing season, I plant new seeds of cucumbers and some i'll grow up some i'll just let trail under my tomatoes i'll let trail you know over the the, the retaining walls um, even out into paths it just saves space that way so next time you see mildew and spider mites on your cucumber plants you're not going to worry because over there you've got some new ones coming along and same as beans uh, cucumbers like a good moist fertile soil and they love the heat of summer so you got no problem right now at this time of year my third choice is a twofer, so this is three and four, and that is root vegetables like carrots and beets. Now beets are super easy and they will grow. You just put them in the ground and they'll take off and you can tuck them in between pepper plants or tomato plants or anything in squash plants. It doesn't matter. Any square uh, where you got this much dirt available, put a couple of um, beet seeds, if you like beets, and they will be ready to go before 60 days. Carrots might take a little longer depending on the variety, but for either of these, it doesn't matter because both are frost tolerant. They can keep trucking through the hot weather and right into the cold, and they're going to be totally fine. In fact, it's great to keep your carrots in the ground, even past frost, even under snow. It's going to store them every bit as good, maybe even better than bringing them in the house. Now, like I said, beets are easy. Just put the seeds in the ground. Carrots are a little tougher because they have tiny little seeds that dry out very quickly. And in order to get carrots to germinate, they got to stay moist the whole time. And we're talking up to two weeks. Carrots are slow to germinate. And it's painful, especially if you live in a place like I do where you get no rain throughout the summer. They're depending completely on you, your drip system, whatever you got to do to keep them moist. So a great tip for carrots, there's a couple. Uh, go ahead and sow your seeds on top of the soil 
And like I said, you got to keep them moist. And it's hard to do when they're sitting on top of the soil. So go ahead and take a board, just sit it right on top of them. And after about a week, you want to lift up that board every day and see if you see any white little sprouts. And check every day after the seven day mark. And as soon as you see some, some white sprouts, pull that board off, keep them watered, and they will root in and they'll start growing. Another way to do it that takes a little less vigilance is to just sprinkle a tiny thin layer of either vermiculite or pine shavings. And we're talking like barely one, you know, layer thick of, of pine shavings, very light, but that's going to keep them moist, but also allow light to get to the seeds, which carrots need. That's why we put them on top of the soil. And within a couple of weeks, you'll start seeing uh, carrot sprouts poking above your vermiculite or your wood shavings. Dill is a great choice herb to plant right now. It takes off really fast and you'll be harvesting that within just a few weeks. Unless you're waiting to harvest the dill seeds and then you'll probably have to wait for them to start to go to flower when it gets a little bit colder. Now, I don't know about you, but my zucchini is going crazy in the garden right now. I planted several plants. They're all producing like mad and I'm giving them away. Yellow squash, it doesn't produce quite as much as the zucchini, but we've gotten a good amount off of there this year. Um, but it's not too late. If you haven't planted them yet or yours are looking a little sickly, um, you can plant some more right now and they will be producing before the 60 day mark. Now, if you have some that are sickly with maybe mildew, um, a real easy thing to do is just go in and clean up the beds. Take, you're gonna see the long trunk of the zucchini uh, or yellow squash kind of snaking through your bed. Go ahead and take off all the old leaves. Any leaf that doesn't look pristine, you know, leave a good five or six leaves on the plant, but all those old ones that are starting to get diseased, brown, mildew, cut them off, throw them away. You can even kind of pick up the trunks of them and just move them if they've strayed into the paths or they're in a place where you don't want them. You can kind of move them gently back into the bed or wherever you do want them. Give them a little fertilizer and that'll keep them going for another month or two. And you won't be looking at dead or diseased leaves, so it's gonna make your garden look a lot more fresh. Because let's face it, those are the biggest leaves in the garden, right? So they can either make or break the looks of your vegetable beds. All right, number seven, my favorite thing to grow, and that is tomatoes. It's not too late to plant tomatoes. So if you planted some earlier in the season, um, maybe you got some earlier and then the heat came and just took them out or made them stop uh, producing, you can limp them along through the, the heat. I'll put a link to a video down in the uh, video description uh, to, how to how to get your tomatoes to kind of persevere through the hot weather and then start producing again once the weather cools off. But if you thought they were done and you pulled them out or they're just completely diseased beyond, you know, all, you, all good use, it's not too late. Even in shorter climates, if you have 60 days left, there are three varieties that you can try. There's Juliet, Early Girl, and subarctic. Now these are all varieties that will produce within that 60 day window. Early girl is typically, you know, found at most garden centers. So you probably can just go and get a couple of plants. The other two, uh, you're gonna wanna order ASAP the seeds and get those going. The good thing is you can sow those seeds right in the ground at this time of year. And with the warm weather, they're gonna take off and grow quickly. For all of these choices, don't forget to fertilize. That's going to help keep them growing faster so they get to that production mark sooner. And it's just gonna give you better fruit and vegetables to harvest. So of course, I always use Neptune's Harvest. I'll put a link in the video description with a discount. That's my seven choices. Be here next month when we start talking about our fall gardens. See you next time.